Hello and welcome back to my channel or welcome on in. Hi, my name is Magic Bun Bun and I am a tarot and oracle reader here to bring you some clarity and confirmation on your intuition, okay? So as you could tell by the title of today's video, this is going to be based off of the new moon in Taurus, that energy that you need to know right now, blessings heading your way, maybe steps if you're watching this before the new moon in Taurus, maybe there's something in here that you would like to um, have ready and set to go for that new moon for that night if you happen to do anything for that night. This is just supposed to make you more aware of the energy that is around you. Now, however, I just like to always point out that this is a general reading, meaning some things may resonate with you and other things will not. And that's because that was meant for somebody else who also happens to be watching the same video. So please keep that in mind while you're watching this. Of course, you can always drop me a comment if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. I do love to read them and I respond back as quickly as I possibly can. All right, so if you are not new around here, you uh, may how, want, want to understand like how this works. Simply stated, I've got pile one, pile two, and pile three, and I have these little oracle cards that I'm going to read off and at least bring closer to my camera. Hopefully it will focus in. That's the ongoing joke of this channel is this camera does not like to focus <laughs> when it comes to text or these cards occasionally. Um, but I will read them out loud, so it might help you if you don't know if you want to go with pile number one, pile number two, or pile number three. If you already know what pile you're gonna go um, gonna go with, like you already know, you don't need to even read this, or you can kind of read it, whatever that might be. Um, in the description bottle below, but description box below. <laughs> excuse me, um, you will find timestamps. You'll see it where it says pile number one and then it will have a number next to that. It should be in blue, I believe, um, and pile two and etc. Pile two, one, two, and three. And you see the numbers there, you click on that and it will fast forward you to your reading. So if you happen to pick pile number three and you do not want to sit through piles one and two, that's absolutely valid and fair. Just go to the description box below, click on that number and it will fast forward you to the beginning of this reading here, okay? So for those though that might need to take some time of course, at this point, you can always pause the video at any point if you really need to meditate before you pick your cards. Take a few deep breaths if you need to, okay? So let me go through these, these little oracle cards right here um, in case maybe this might help somebody who might be very indecisive. And you can always pick more than one pile. Each will have their own uh, different messages, so they'll touch on different aspects of the life. So um, let me just get started. Okay, so pile number one, we have this right here. Wildflower, live an uncontrolled life, free to grow anywhere and bound by nothing. Okay, so that's pile number one. Pile number two, let's see. Power focus almost worked. We have discover, look at the early dew drop before they disappear with the morning sun discover. Look at that early dew drops before they disappear with the morning sun. Really nice. And then pile number three, we have twilight. Surrender to the last hour when the light barely touches the flowers. So there we go, the third one, twilight. Surrender to the last hour when the light barely touches the flowers. So hopefully that helped anyone who might be indecisive. You know, maybe there was key words in there. Maybe you want to go with flower, discover, or twilight. You know, keep that in mind. Um, and other than that, thank you so much for being here. Please make sure to like, you know, subscribe to the channel if you like these style of readings. Like the video, share with a friend, drop a comment. This all helps me um, grow this channel and it's a free way to support, okay? Thank you so, so, so very much. And anything else that I might be missing or I feel like I didn't, like, um, properly describe or touch base on, um, I will drop in the description box. Okay, but I will catch you in your reading. Hello and welcome in pile number one. Welcome to your reading for the new moon in Taurus happening this Saturday, April 30th. Okay, so the new moon in Taurus. Let's find out what the cards have to say for you. We're going to start with the tarot and then I have a very simple picking for the oracle this time around. I kind of wanted to keep it clean, keep it um, very straight to the point in that way, um, instead of throwing a lot of information. I thought maybe this would be a, a new way to try out the tarot, see if this is more clear and concise information, um, but let me know in the comments below if you like this, if you would like more cards, um, you know, like more of the same cards, you'd like to see more of them out there. I will be probably bringing at least maybe one other oracle in towards the end, but for right now, we're going to start with these. Okay, so actually, we're going to start with the tarot. Okay, so let me put, get everyone spaced out here. Kind of keep this, you know, you know where I put the wildflower, I might put that card 
right there in the corner. Let us find out what this new moon has in store for you, pile number one. So right off the bat, this is the card that was at the bottom of the deck when I pre-shuffled these cards um, off screen um, to save some time in this part here. We have the Hierophant, which is very interesting because the Hierophant is um, too in tuned or related with Taurus energy. It's governed by the, the astrological sign of Taurus, which this is for the new moon in Taurus, which is interesting that it's also in reverse because it does give us that high occult energy, that um, becoming your own tutor energy, um, starting new beginnings, trying to go on your own path, going away from the collective, and also you're not trying to share information. This is more about you gaining information for just yourself. And for some of you that is going to be in tune with a spiritual journey, you're trying to find out more information re in regards to your spiritual path. Maybe there's something that is was forbidden from you from learning before or you've just kind of uh, started with it. Maybe you've read something around this night you're going to kind of see more information about it and you want to kind of get things started like getting notes started, book started, like starting a book um, a book list to read list, um, wanting to go to the library maybe that day or the day before and after because this, this energy will be around. It'll be you know the Friday before, the Sunday afterwards. Not everyone has time on the night of the new moon to prepare or to you know have that time you know dedicated which is absolutely fine you can do this new moon energy you know usually the day before and after that's absolutely fine too okay so let us get the rest of the cards flipped to kind of see the full picture okay so some key players in here we have two other major arcana cards right here which we have the wheel of fortune which is governed by Jupiter, which is also the ruler of Sagittarius energy, which we have the wands here, knight, or the knight of wands, excuse me, the knight of wands. This might be a little hard to see. They're very beautiful cards. They're very glossy though. So my lights tend to like to fight with them, but very beautiful. If also my autofocus would like to cooperate. Okay. It looks like we got a little bit there. Okay, so the Knight of Wands can mean like Aries Leo, but I personally attune it with Sagittarius energy as well. And then we have the Death card, which is attuned with Scorpio energy. The Page is the keeper of all the Earth elements, Capricorn, Virgo, um, and Taurus energy as well. So you can kind of see how the Earth signs have coming into here and how we have a little bit of water. We have some fire. So we have a lot going on for this new moon, this energy, at least via the, the tarot first, okay? So we have the page of pentacles. This is what it looks like upright. Sometimes it's a little hard for me to read this So um, when they're upside down like that. So just if you see me flipping it over, it's mostly just to make sure I am talking about the right card. Beautiful cards absolutely gorgeous this is the embroidered forest tarot highly recommend um just take some getting used to with the type of font and seeing how pretty it is okay so the page of pentacles kind of doubles this energy of the hierophant about trying to get things started trying to find something more to research about trying to find something that um you're passionate about you're trying to ground that energy you're trying to um what's the word like I just get someone who's researching who's wanting to research who may be feeling overwhelmed because they have to be their own teacher they feel like they can't find a mentor there's no one out there that exactly it hits like their qualifications um they don't know where to begin they might be feeling like I said very overwhelmed overwhelmed them at this well actually kind of both of them but the ten of wands also we have a ten and a ten so like ending a phase of your life a lot of you might be going through a lot of a spiritual upheaval because we are using this new moon for our manifestations for a new beginning a fresh start, um, knowing nothing, and then having to kind of go into the unknown, maybe feeling like blinded, um, feeling like you're not sure of where to begin. That's why we kind of have these tens as a challenge, kind of like we're ending a circle, which also brings us uh, to the death card, and I'll get to that in a moment. Um, but with that ten of wands energy, it kind of brings up the feeling of like, being overburdened, having to really focus in on only a few things you want to research and not everything. Otherwise, it's going to be overwhelming. But you might be the type of person who's like, but I want to know everything. I've got the energy. I want to do this. But then the energy becomes scattered. And this doesn't have to be even just like a new research project. This is about something and some energy you're trying to dedicate your time into. Um, it doesn't have to also be just a spiritual journey. This could be trying to gain ma uh, materialistic goals. There's 
nothing wrong with that in the sense of like the hierophant that Taurus energy. Um, Taurus is about luxury and comfort and having good food and surrounding yourself um, with good like good quality food materials you know investing in that sort of things you might be thinking outside the box or require to think outside of the box in order to reach your goals the traditional path may not be what's suited to you there's could also be talks of maybe there's someone in your life that is feeling like um one side is taking over the other. They're taking a lot of your attention, they're a distraction, or they're um, taking a lot of your energy and time when you're trying to dedicate it to something that maybe you are more like, I want to learn more about this. They're trying to get me to do it their way. Like they're being stubborn. They're not allowing you to grow. They're not allowing you, you know, they're holding some part of power and authority. And it's kind of like we need to bring an end to that sort of relationship. We have to bring the focus back into with this Six of Pentacles. This is about bringing back your energy and time back to yourself. You're not in a position to be able to giving the this information or this um someone like who's just getting things started you're just trying to find things out for yourself you're not in a position in order to give information away to give your time away when you're trying to draw that back into yourself so the death card is like we need to put an end to that type of situation and like we're going to keep the wheel spinning this might be a beginning of like a whole year long journey with this wheel card like going through the seasons keeping the cycle going, keeping this momentum going. Uh, with death, it brings us like a rebirth, you know, like the snake that is present on here. I think autofocus might work. There we go. So it kind of like bringing into focus, bringing into focus. I'm thinking about all my autofocus. It is a ongoing joke on this channel with how my autofocus likes to work or not whenever it feels like it. Um, but bringing in, like, shedding the skin and having rebirth. Also, with the snake being present in here, snakes have also been known as symbols of knowledge, gaining knowledge, gaining knowledge of the unknown. Maybe some of you are trying to work with death deities, and this is, like, your calling. This is your sign to kind of get started, to work on that, to gain more information about that. Maybe um, you might be seeing snakes in your practice, more of, like, you know, you've been like, mm, I don't know, I'm thinking about this deity or this path or this, you know, working with this um energy and a snake is a symbol of that energy this could be a sign for you as well but we're kind of seeing this with this new moon energy especially with this wildflower quote here live an uncontrolled life feel uh, life free to grow anywhere and bound by nothing this is about getting away or getting out from underneath someone's thumb even if it's your own thumb like you had strict rules set upon yourself that you could only do things in a certain way this is about abolishing that kind of traditional viewpoint and being more open to experiencing something new going about it in a new way and a new perspective seeing it from a new eyes okay so we're also going to bring in some some we're gonna bring in the oracle some tarot i'm just moving the tarot over we're gonna see we're gonna fit i might have to zoom out just a little bit let me just do that really quick okay just a little bit Okay, so then we have first up here, we have Love Spell. And we're going to focus. I will read what it says. I'm just trying to see if I can get it into focus. I guess not. Let the honey of your soul swell in the depths of love. Now, for some of you who like to do rituals, who may have a very witchy background, if I dare say, you know, definitely dealing with the reverse of the Hierophant would imply some of you out there like working um, or studying the occult, like doing spell works, like casting this. You know, love spells within itself has a, oh, their own ethical background, which I'm not going to get into this reading in particular for this one. This is just going to go basically off of like the guidebook and how I interpret interpret this love spell card into here but yes it could imply some of you might be trying to do a love spell always be cautious but anyways I digress this love spell though here is more of implying a love spell within yourself trying to find your values as well with the hierophant energy is finding values that match your values not those of others not those of the collective not those of other people that are trying to come in and like push their values onto you that are trying to push you out of balance this love spell is more about also talking about things that give you passion and creativity creativity what make you feel alive you know finding values and if you are looking for love portray it more in a sense of like maybe some of you want to do divination or you do want to cast like a spell into the universe to bring you love what is it that you look for 
when you are in love? What is the values of the person that you're looking for when in love? What are characteristics? Like, do you know that information? Do you have that information? Before you can also get into this love spell, you have to have like an ending of a phase. For some of you that's cutting out somebody who was this very, um, had a very high influence into your life. Like, we need to put to bed this past cycle before we can accept new love into our life. We have affection. We have some more fire energy. We have a little Taurus symbol here. So pile number one, this is very strong for you. This Taurus season, this Taurus energy for you. Um, highly intuitive as well. We see the little kitty that's present here. And cats have also been attached to intuition as well. But we have this fiery sign as well. This effect, or I meant from the symbol here, not not the earth sign of Taurus, um, but fire and earth is a really great combination. It's like grounding that fire, grounding that affection, having that time for yourself, you know, showing yourself love and affection. For some of you, you might want to do a beauty ritual that night and more of like, you know, taking care of your skin is a form of beauty. Skin care, you know, you can put symbols on your body of like love onto your body um, to kind of, uh, bring that magic into like little mundane tasks because that's another thing with these pentacle cards they talk about the mundane daily tasks that you can find magic within those mundane tasks as well okay all right let's find out what you need to surrender for this new moon because sometimes it's about letting things go in order to bring new things in as we can see here with these tens you also might be seeing ten tens a lot um and the day is coming towards the new moon this is just like a sign like hey spirits here they're listening they're trying to send you signs like listen to this um know that we're trying to guide you okay so let's see here also i just figured we have about 12 we got an opposing sign of 21 so we've got ones and twos and then we go from 12 to 13 very interesting that we see kind of like these setups these numbers coming into here kind of like things are falling into place things will be going into order all right what do you need to surrender surrender your addictions am i going to get this card to focus i will read it of course but i'm trying to see okay of course not uh, whether you're addicted to substances food people sex or overworking take action to begin to heal the addiction and replace it with healthier alternatives and for some of you this could be more of negative thinking towards yourself you need to replace that this negative thought process you might have about yourself like burning yourself like with the fire of the wands you know that fire energy um you're burning yourself you know you're trying to grow into a new rebirth because also with the death card has also been portrayed as a phoenix kind of rising from those ashes this could be in a sign for some of you that you need to stop this negative thinking and I know sometimes it's easier said than done but maybe tr going traditional ways of mentorship hasn't worked for you maybe like traditional self-help books haven't worked for you that's why we have to start thinking outside of the box where can you gain help where can you learn to love yourself even better you know where can you also recognize these traits in yourself when you realize you're having a negative thought about yourself how can you let that go and for some of you there's going to be more addictions that will require professional help this is becoming more aware of those um, addictions that you might be having to let that to let it go which is a great first step small steps still matter becoming aware still matters it is a huge step in that regards as well so uh, keep that in mind you know um this can also be a sign with taurus energy that some of you are maybe trying to put into an end a lot of over indulge indulgences um with this addiction card being present you're also realizing like you know i might be addicted to xyz and i kind of need to start letting that go and this is going to help me embrace a new phase of my life i'm going to start pouring that energy balancing things out especially with this six being here it could be out of balance because you're working too much but you're not you know having any fun that you're going to start bringing that into balance and it's going to feel like a new phase to you because you've never done that before you never considered it before but that's what that death card is kind of bringing into into the playground as we see here all right so instead of like my normal um which i might still bring in one or two these self-care cards if you've been in my other videos or you watch or you go on instagram or even my shorts here on youtube you'll see that i use these a lot but i wanted to you know kind of bring in this one here this is stress relief and self-care cards as well and they kind of give steps and how you can actually like like a step-by-step -step process of how you can bring in stress and stress relief and some self-care okay so with this one, we have a coffee or tea ceremony. Oh, look at that. I got a dog focus. Okay. Finding calm in everyday moments. Step one, for this exercise, you can use a cup of coffee or tea. Two, close your eyes and sit with your beverage. Enjoy the aroma and peace and the peace of mind. 
three, take a long, slow sip, paying attention to how the warm liquid feels moving down your throat. Feel gratitude for having the presence of mind to practice mindfulness through an everyday act. Do this to the best of your ability. Obviously, it doesn't have to be a hot drink. It could be a cold drink. And for those who maybe don't like tea or you don't like um, coffee, you know, maybe for some of you, cucumber water or lemon water will be really great. It could be something you do first thing in the morning of the new moon, you know, or days leading up to it. Maybe this is your moment to try to build in. Like you take a minute of your time just having like those little mindful moments. You also to think of this as surrendering your addictions of the first thing you do, you know, when you wake up is go on your phone, which I completely understand you know but you go on your phone maybe you want to switch that off you know what i'm gonna have a sip of water before i even touch my phone you know i'm just gonna go get a nice drink of water before i even look at it you know um and be careful when you're you know hitting that snooze button for some of you out there but so we okay so we have this all right so let me what am i gonna do here we go we're going to use this one i think we're gonna end on this one this feels very very complete as well, if you do miss those other self-care cards, I use them all the time on Instagram. I'm very active on my Instagram account, um, which is all linked in the description below. So uh, I also will sometimes pull cards in my Instagram story, Instagram stories, where you can like, I can pull a card specifically for you for free. And sometimes I'll use like the self-care cards or even actually this is one of my popular ones. Um, so check me out on Instagram if you haven't already. I do a lot of free content that is over there as well. Okay, this is going to kind of be like a little affirmation that you can use again the days leading up to or on the night of the new moon. While you're conjuring or uh, creating magic, I should say. Pile number one. Let's see. What does the divine have to say? Be clear on what you want. Put action to your goals. Make them a reality. Very strong card for you, pile number one. This is really great for this new moon energy, for manifestations, for, you know, if you're casting spells that night, you know, this is very, very strong, very deep connection with the occult for pile number one, or a deep connection, not just with the occult, but with your higher self, your aligned path. You know, for those of you out there that don't practice that, this is more about you like changing a directory of your path. Something that maybe you thought was impossible before is now going to become a reality. And I kind of see it more in these small steps that will take some time in order to complete. All right, pile number one, thank you so much for being here again. Please make sure to like, subscribe to the channel, all that good stuff. If you would like to, you know, check out more information about me, find me on other socials, everything is linked in the description below. And thank you again for being here. I truly do appreciate it. And I hope you have a wonderful new moon, okay? And other than that, I will catch you in the next one. Bye. Hello, pile number two, and welcome to your reading. Again, this is for that Taurus new moon happening April 30th, okay? At least April 30th, my time, all right? So we're going to start with the tarot, and then we are going to move into the oracle. And I did have actually a, you know, not a huge helping of oracle this time around. I still might bring like in one into here. Um, and I did this because I wanted to see if this would make things a little bit more clear, more concise. But let me know if you like this, if you like it's going straight to the point, there's only one option, or if you would like to see that see that there's more um money you know cards of either like the same one or just more oracle in general brought in okay so let's get started let me put the cards down here and we're going to start with this is the card that was on the bottom of the deck and again remember discover look at the early dew drops before they disappear in the morning sun so we're going to put that in the corner right there here we go. Okay, so we have the uh, nine of elixirs in reverse. So kind of like you've been really wanting to have grand wishes, maybe wishes that haven't been coming true um, or haven't been putting the work in. Like there's no self-satisfaction going on right now. Um, this is going to be the card that's kind of going to be behind each of these other cards, which let's kind of see what we're working with. Let's get the full picture. All right, um, if you have Libra or Virgo, even some Leo placements in here, I would say Libra for sure. This might be a reading that's very attuned to your energy pile number two. And I say that because we have this suit, um, 
the Queen of Blades, which is like the Queen of Swords, and Justice. And both of these cards I tuned with uh, Libra, Libra energy right here. Um, this one is governed for sure by Libra, but um, the Queen of Blades I tuned specifically to Libra energy. Leo is attuned with Strength, and the Hermit is with Virgo. So if you're wondering where I'm getting those from, that's kind of like how I read these, how I bring some astrological signs into the meaning behind the cards as well. Okay, so a lot of you, let's see, right away, like I said, with that um, nine of elixirs brewing, this is nine of cups, by the way, elixirs means cups, which I think is pretty simple, pretty evident, but anyways, that's what that means. Um, in reverse, like I said, it's wishes coming true, trying to think of things from a very logical standpoint, but not having your heart into it. There's a lot of looking towards the past, especially with the six of elixirs being present into here, a lot of looking towards the past through like rose co colored glasses. Things may have not been fair in the past, they may have not been very fair or they're not working out the way you want it to work out. So it's kind of like dreams are feeling broken. Um, barriers have been feeling very breached. People have been overstepping, like maybe stomping on your heart or telling you like your dreams aren't going to come true. They're not, um, they're not dreams based in reality. There are not dreams that maybe you are attaining that is true to your heart with these two of elixirs being right here. So we have a lot of water energy coming into here as well with these three um, cups or elixirs that are being present. Yeah, strength and blades. Okay, so yeah, so materialistic, we don't see any wands. We don't see, and we don't see any pentacles. We have some earth energy present into here with the hermit card being here, but we don't see, and we have a little bit of fire from the Leo card as well, I should point that out, but we don't see actually any pentacles or um, wands being present into here. I think wands are rods in this deck. Anyways. Um, but yeah, so when we see this, it's kind of like also with this two of cups, this could be, um, some of you might be fighting with a significant person into your life, kind of causing a lot of detachment and heartbreak because you're not seeing things eye to eye, you're not coming to the same conclusion, maybe your dreams aren't, um, aligning with each other, and for some of you, this is with your higher self, this is kind of seeking some solitude, you kind of have to have this alone time, this new moon might be a really great journey that you're going to want to go on to, um, going, uh, going deeper, kind of analyzing your fears. Are your fears attached to your past? Are your fears like, I'm too scared that this is going to be a cycle that repeats itself? Because some of you might be self-sabotaging. And I say this because we have the nine of cups, or the nine, sorry, the nine of elixirs in reverse. And with that, it's kind of like your wishes are so true to coming, are coming true that it scares you, that you sabotage it so that like, you never get to that point. Because maybe you don't know what's going to happen afterwards. You're so stuck in a past cycle, it's hard to break free. And this is where your higher self is like you're not really treating yourself kindly you're not giving yourself the benefit of the doubt like you have the possibility to go on you have a guiding force in light especially with this hermit card being present here the light that's on the top of the skull that's present right here it's kind of like you're not trusting your inner voice. You're not trusting that you have all the tools necessary, that the knowledge necessary. You're not even treating yourself fairly. You kind of fairly. You're not even like giving yourself grace, you know, and giving yourself even the ability to make a mistake. Like you're letting perfectionism, you know, get to you because like if it didn't do it, if you didn't do things a certain way before, it's like you don't want to change and adapt to that. You're kind of set in your own ways. And that's kind of what's drawing these fears, especially if things around you are changing. Like I said, for some of you um, that are in a relationship, this could be or in a relationship or very, very close to someone, someone that's so close to you, they're your best friend. You know, this could be seeing like heartache being brought into that, that things just aren't fair or you gave them or it you're looking at them through rose colored glasses. Like they used to be a good person and they're no longer like that. And you're like holding them to a standard where it's like, maybe it's better off that you're just alone in this, that you have time to yourself, time to analyze and, um, incorporate your own voice. Kind of like with the, also the queen of blades, also known as like the queen of ice kind of brings into this. This is about your boundaries. This is about what you're capable of. This is about, um, not letting other people's voices kind of come in and trying to change your mind, to change your dreams. You're putting boundaries up for that. With the strength card to the elixirs, or just the strength card in general, the strength card is kind of like the power to endure this change, the power to be adaptable, the power to kind of see the positive side of a situation and realize that you're no longer gonna be tied down in that way. Um, your dreams have the power to expand. 
Okay, so that's what I'm seeing from the tarot. We're going to bring in some of the oracle into here for sure. Is there anything else that I feel like I'm missing for this new moon? So this new moon might be bringing to light a lot of these feelings. Um, if you're feeling very emotional, feeling, feeling very needing, needing solitude, this could be a, a sign for you to seek that solitude, to maybe do some journaling. Maybe some of you, you need to kind of have a plan in order. You need to see the details. You are very analytical and your mind and your heart are, have not been seen eye to eye. This is why we kind of see the two of elixirs in reverse. Um, you're not seeing things, um, either you're, it's like one extreme or the other. You either see things super logically or then your heart kind of comes in and crashes everything or vice versa. Like you're seeing things through your emotions, but your logic needs to come in and reason with you and try to pull you back down to earth and make things realistic. It's kind of one or the other in, in this situ situation. Um, and then with this as well, this is more about, like I said, planning. Um, and for some of you, this could be like doing service for others that if you feel like, you know, you're not in a great place to help yourself, but maybe you have the ability to help others and bring fairness and bring, um, patience to another person's situation. That might be something that can help you heal in the end of this. If you're going through a healing phase of like, you know, letting go of the past to embrace a new future. But this new moon could be really um, about you being more enlightened about yourself, about your self journey, about your own voice and how like you can be an individual and it can be a guiding force for others as well. Like people that have gone, that have, are going through the same thing that you're currently going through or that you have been going through, um, that you can now reach out and be like, you know what, this is just like what has happened to me and I hope this story can help somebody if they're trying to heal or trying to let go. Like these are the red flags. Like, you know, you only have so much patience, patience for the past and past actions. Um, and let me see. So this, yeah, for this new moon, I see that's a lot of journaling for you, pile number two. It's a lot of journaling. It's a lot of going in deeper into yourself, but also about your dreams. Like, I feel like if people have been bringing you down, this is about you also lifting yourself back up, kind of like cutting, like I said, cutting out the collective voice of self-doubters that are kind of going into your mind and bringing in a lot of self-doubt that, you know what, at some point you're going to have to put boundaries up and it's going to be very hard, especially if they're child, if they're a childhood friend or an ex, um, of any nature, um, that you want to kind of give them the benefit of the doubt, but maybe they're actually just, they're not good for you. They're not good for your dreams. They're not good to allow you to discover new things to even learn it the way you want to learn it. Even if it's a tough lesson, like that's your lesson to learn. Don't let anyone take that from you. All right. So let me bring in some of the Oracle. We have the goat. We've got 13. Fearlessness, I am oh, fearlessness, I am in the path I choose, for I've never been led astray. Always finding my way. Literally what I was just talking about, about finding your own way, using your own voice, being authentic to yourself, setting up your own boundaries. Kind of like I get this attitude for you, pile number two. This is more of like um, you don't like if someone's talking to you and they're kinda like depressing or they're Debbie Downers or they're, they're just like, you know what, we're not going to um they're just not positive and it's like you don't need you don't need to be surrounded by positivity like all the time like someone who's just realistic in that way you know sometimes you need to talk to someone and it's like okay realistically can you do it this way this way there's a difference between someone who's just like it's not gonna work and then you're like well why is it not gonna work and they're like I don't know it's just not versus well what if I have a plan together what if I did this and it's like okay well let's go over your plan let's go over your plan and then we'll see if we can get it to work we'll see you know what dreams you want to make happen no bigger how small the goat kind of comes in and is like you know what you are great on your own you are fearless you're going to be setting your own path if you can instinctually and you have your gut feeling there's something you wanted to manifest something you wanted to do something you wanted to have your power into like you wanted to devote your time energy your heart and your mind are finally aligning when you think of this project this is your sign to go and do this project right this is your sign to initiate it get it started start the planning process put your heart and soul into it right but not listening to the words of others who are trying to maybe give you a lot of the self-doubt to let that go and be like I'm going to show you that I can do it type of energy protection we have protection coming up here so we've got some protection energy some of you might want to do some protection spells that night or just protecting your home doing a spiritual cleanse of it spiritual cleanse of this um energy of this other person who might be coming in who's very harsh with their words especially with that um queen of blades because that could also be an influence of that person that person is the problem 
that Virgo energy that comes with the hermit. They're always trying to prove that they're right as well. Like they're trying to be cynical with their words. They're looking at details. Instead, you can harness that power for yourself. You can set up protection in your home, protection in your sacred space, protection of your mind, protection of your energy, and not allowing anyone to drain your energy, right? Like this is your energy. These are your dreams. This is protection. I also get the hint like you don't have to tell everyone everything. Um, this might be something that you're just going to keep to yourself, that you're going to keep to yourself and you don't have to share with anyone until the time is right, until you're proud of it, until you're like, okay, all right, I've done all I can do at this point. This is all I, you know, I have to give it to spirit in that way. All right. All right. Let's find out what you need to surrender. This is really great because sometimes it's you good to surrender in order to embrace changes that are happening. Surrender to passion get out of your head and feel the fire in your belly focus on the people or activities that ignite your passion and let it flow and no i do not look at these cards beforehand i just select them put them down put them in the pile and use live i read them here live roll as i'm recording this um this is just happens to be spot on with surrender to passion surrender to things that bring out your higher self and kind of um you're not neglecting your lower energy your lower vibrations your lower self your shadow self if you will as well um or your negative qualities like you're not going to throw yourself into your passions without seeing like the end outcome but this is more about like you know what maybe you've been so been so in your own head you've been so logical about things that it's time to kind of let that side of you go just a little bit like give us some free range and not self-doubt when you're trying to create these projects like when those self-doubt ideas or those thought process come out it's kind of shutting that down be like you know what allow me to create if there was something from your childhood that gave you a lot of passion that gave you a lot of heart because leo is ruler of the heart and it's like you know, it gave you a lot of passion and momentum and like it connects you to yourself again, connects you to your higher self, your spiritual self, you're the divine to spirit. This is your hint and your like affirmation in that way itself. It's like, you know, surrender to your passions, bring it back, bring it back and look back into it with open, with open arms, opportunities, you know, maybe something you couldn't do as a child, you can do now. You don't have to be so, you know, like, you don't have to be so like, I have to have a reason for everything that I do. Okay, so then we have a stress relief and self-care. Finding peace. Tuning into the energy of peace. Step one, get into a comfortable position and close your eyes. Two, think of a very peaceful place in your mind like a private refuge or a place of worship. Probably also somewhere where you feel protected. Three, see yourself immersed in the energy of the serene environment and take it all in. Four, enjoy the sense of peace you feel in the moment. So amongst all this chaotic energy, which is kind of bringing us back to justice, you know, keeping things in balance, we see this as well. Bringing things into balance, finding peace again, kind of cutting out the old and embracing this new phase of yourself, this new start, this new passion. You know, and I say new passion, like I said, it could have been an old passion from your childhood with this um, elixir card being here, but it could also just be like, you know, a fond memory that kind of sparks things and get things going, gets your dreams going again. All right, oh, here they are. Okay, we're going to end with this. Um, I didn't use my self-care cards, my other self-care cards. I really liked bringing in a variation of cards. That's hence why I brought this one in. But if you're interested, I do a lot of, um, I'm very active on my Instagram account, which is all linked below, and it's all magic underscore bun bun as well. Um... But if you're ever interested in my Instagram stories, I like to, you know, put a little like question box in there and tell people, hey, you know what, drop an emote in here and I will respond with a card for you. And sometimes I'll say what the deck I'm using is, which is one of my popular ones. I'll use this one a lot. And self-care cards or affirmation cards. So if you're like, oh, you know what, I would like a card that's picked just for me and it's, you know, completely for free, you know, check out my Instagram account, check out my other socials, but I'm very active on my Instagram account, so you know keep that in mind especially if you missed and i'm talking about these cards these self-care cards if you really missed this one i use those i will use those i use a lot of my oracle cards 
Oh, here we go. All right, pile number two. We have stay the course. You are moving in the right direction. And look at, we kind of have that fiery passion from like this card to here. Kind of like, you know, you're pushing other people away. We also have this. You're heading in the right direction. This is confirmation for you. If you've been thinking about a path you've been wanting to take, you've been wanting to think about, you know, a new fresh start. You want to wanting to take a new passion project. You wanted to get up, you know, you've been wishing for. You're like, is this the time and the moment? This is like, affirmative like yes it is you have the passion you have the power you know let's get things started here stay the course you are moving in the right direction all right thank you again pile number two for being here please make sure to thumbs up the video share with a friend please drop a comment it really helps me it's a free way to support me here on my channel i do appreciate it please check out my other socials um other than that everything will be linked in the description box below and i hope you have a wonderful new moon in taurus wherever you are in the world if you choose to celebrate it or not maybe watch this video on the night of the new moon if that's what you would like to do that's absolutely amazing and great and other than that i will catch you in the next one thank you again for being here i truly appreciate it bye hello pile number three and welcome to your reading for the new moon in taurus happening the 30th april 30th this saturday at least for my time zone all right, so this was the card. This is Twilight. Surrender to the last hour when the light barely touches the flowers. Super sweet. And here we have the spacious tarot guiding us on the tarot portion. And then we're going to bring out the oracle. Now this time I did just bring out a few oracles. I'll probably be pulling at least one more um, live like shuffling right here. But I did pull just these ones here to kind of keep things very simple. Only one option in that sense. I mean, there's very ways to reach to read each of these cards and of course you can choose to like do it like for the stress relief and self-care card you can choose to do that or not um totally up to you but let me know what you think about this if you would like to me to use more cards if you're like you know what i like that it was very simple this time around you know what, what do you think about that you can leave me a comment below you know what you thought about the oracle options there okay so let's get started let me put down actually i should have been doing that when i was talking let us find out what the tarot has to say Okay, starting off with, we have the Empress. Okay, so this is about, some of you might be manifesting magic, you might be manifesting resources, um, power, um, abundance, prosperity. You're like, bring it in, bring it to me. This is what I want, this is what I want to manifest. For some of you, this is sensuality, this is love, this is a deeper connection, maybe a partner as well. Um, the Empress kind of brings in that energy of just like creation all around abundance and florals like um, ruled by Venus with the Empress card ruling over actually both Libra and Taurus energy. So this could be a very essential, very um, comfortable new moon um, energy you might be feeling right there to make sure everyone's in the shot um this could be very much so of like um sitting in your power like you're trying to some of you like i said might be doing magic that night manifesting magic just doing affirmations that night um coming you know unless you're watching this the night of this might be something you might be interested in doing but like sitting in your power sitting in your authority not chasing but attracting all right nine of wands four of pentacles four of wands elder of cups which is the king so it'd be the king of cups three of wands another three four of okay so um you might be seeing a lot of signs of threes from the empress and the three of wands so three three and also and also you know with the nine it comes in threes as well but we also have four four and four when i was talking about seeing a partner very interesting that we see fours in here because obviously from the three of the empress brings in the four of the emperor so some of you might be trying to manifest a partner okay you might be wanting a partner or someone like you can share your time with someone who completes the the other side of you or makes you feel that way makes you feel like you know to your you know their welcoming of your quirkiness um for others of you this is about a connection with your higher self drawing in more of that masculine energy to yourself if you feel like you need more masculine energy or vice versa you want to bring in more feminine energy bring in more of a balance also not even about feminine or masculine energy it's more about like um 
absorbing and pushing out energy as well kind of like you're bringing in a lot and you want to be able to you know express that give it structure it's also about that type of energy as well especially if you don't want to work with feminine masculine terminology or energy that's completely valid it's completely fine think of it more as absorbing energy bringing it in like you've been in a space of absorbing and now you're trying to find ways to express it this new moon is about expressing it and pushing that energy back out to the universe um with these nine nine of wands the four of pentacles in reverse and the four of wands in reverse i see someone who's very closed off like you've been wanting abundance prosperity even love and this could be self-love towards yourself you could be very much more of like um been very 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 closed off it's been a challenge to open up because you're not sure where it's going to go maybe you've suffered through someone emotionally controlling you or manipulating you even if it feels like behind the scenes especially with this um elder of cups in reverse someone who isn't um, who's been acting very immature or has been very like um talking behind your back type of energy as well for some of you this is not about dealing with the person or about wanting this like for yourself this is more about like celebrating your victories or feeling like things have have, have not been worth it. I should put it in that term instead. Um, this is about like your defenses are up. You've worked so hard. Your energy has been poured into this that you're feeling very drained. You're feeling very drained as we see this both with the four of pentacles in reverse, kind of like your protection or the protection that you've set up the abundance is kind of starting to fall off you feel like it's not really gaining momentum and that's why you've been feeling very unsuccessful with this four of wands in reverse like nothing to celebrate no parties to go to nothing to throw you for yourself you feel like it hasn't been you're just in the beginning steps of where you're going you haven't like you're like you might even put a lot of work in is basically what i'm saying here you, you put a lot of work in but you feel like you're still on the basic side of the steps like you're just in the beginning you're in step one two and three and four like you haven't even reached the halfway point is in your mind what's going on right now so kind of like emotional manipulation towards yourself if that makes sense um like you've been wanting this is your goal you're trying to reach this empress status you know having magic and chaos kind of all around you and abundance and feeling like um feeling like royalty in that way but feeling like as well like you haven't deserved like you don't deserve it you haven't reached it and we kind of see this with like a lot of burnout. Like you're not even willing to celebrate those victories that you have done. You know, with this four of wands, you haven't even wanted to celebrate it. Like I said, this is like you're drained emotionally. You're drained from your heart. Your muse is like, I need to tap out. I need to take a break. I, who you know, before we get back into it, this is heavy stuff type of scenario we're going through with this. If you're creating something, if you're trying to manifest something on this night of the new moon. Um, it's very hard for you to ground it because we see a lot of uh, fire and water um, and we but we have a good balance here because we also have air we have everything kind of coming together your resources are gathering um, the three of wands is also about like you know um, kind of like implying again I'm getting someone who's like you know they have done so much but they feel like they've done nothing. They feel stagnant. They feel like nothing's changing. They can no longer see. Like we see the mountains in the background here. This person can no longer see it. You can no longer envision it. You no longer want to celebrate it because you don't feel like you're getting to the next step. It's so far gone that it's like impossible in your mind. And this is kind of coming out with a tarot of like, you know what? It's time for a moment of rest. It is a time, a moment of celebration. You have to actually write down your goals or write down your accomplishments. Create a task um, list that you can physically scratch off so you can go back and see everything you've done in the day, everything you've done in the week leading up. Like all these small steps matter. The Four of Swords being upright like this is like, like you see, it's like a stillness with like the swords resting in the snow. It's a stillness. It's like meditation. It's, um, not letting your thoughts control you it's being aware of your thoughts and aware of what you're thinking and aware of like you know where you can make changes and small improvements like these small steps will take you you know i also get from this group it's work smarter not harder don't let your energy kind of burn out don't let your muse burn out don't let you know chasing after everything that you want like with the empress it's more about like you know lounging back and seeing the successes that are around you the blessings that you're around you you know and don't comparing your journey to others as well this is about also like you know get your defenses down open up to others um there could be someone like i said i feel like some of you might have been um, emotionally um what's the word emotionally like i said emotionally manipulated before 
and you know this is why we're seeing like closed doors all around and it's like you just need a moment of rest to analyze the situation to bring stability back okay um with this as well because we are missing then the four of cups that's the only one that we're missing of the minor arcana the four of cups this is lack of doing with like love um it's just like not high as a priority right now with the cups being gone. We kind of have like the master right here with the elder of cups. It's like the master of emotions, of emotional intelligence as well. But in reverse, it's like intel um the emotion emotional intelligence is warped. It's not correct. It's making you always doubt yourself or you're judging like you're thinking other people are thinking this of you. This can also be a sign of literally because we have this card surrounded like by energy, someone who's sucking up this energy that is always making you tired after you deal with them that you need to rest. Okay, so let us bring in some Oracle goddess make sure to feel it in your bones for you are what you believe now there's two ways to interpret this card this is effectively for those who work with deities who work with goddess energy um remember also i was talking about that feminine masculine energy and we can find that some goddesses do have like all, all goddesses have both you know they just might present maybe more of a feminine type of energy that you want to work with this could be a sign to work with your goddess to leave offerings for your goddess um but this is also interpreted a totally another way which is about treating yourself like a god or goddess or just treating yourself like a spiritually spiritually divine um setting boundaries up making sure people know their place making sure that they know like not to disturb you in certain settings making sure like when you see a goddess um or envision a goddess like when you read about mythology it's very like blessed or cursed in order to see one like they choose when they want to be seen in that sense this is you allowing that choice like for some of you this could also be an implication right here between these two fours kind of like battling it out your energy is too drained to go out and celebrate right now you've been out and about too much you need to stay home for a night and get some rest do something for yourself treat yourself right you know but stay at home I know I think this is like drinking honey in here, but I also think of like ambrosia or, you know, like being able just to like have a nice smoothie, you know, drinking some tea, something like that to be really relaxing, taking care of your skin, taking care of your, um, also your emotional needs. You know, that's another way to see this goddess card is like, you're also like treating yourself with dignity and pride and not allowing other people to come in and step on your toes or to drain, like I said, drain your energy, drain your time and your intentions away. When we see this goddess card pop up okay refinement for some of you this is about refinement we have we have more force i just realized more force coming into here refinement some of you this is about planning you haven't been planning very well your plans need refinement this is why you can't see things from the bigger picture also with that keen um, or the elder of cups i should say you don't see some of you are like master um uh, what's not creators like artists there we go oh my gosh i couldn't think of the word um you are master artists or you're on the path of becoming one but you don't see it maybe because you're not putting enough energy into the projects or you haven't covered the basics yet you haven't gone over the basics and you kind of have to keep going and repeating in that nature like don't get bored with it yet there could be great results from it but you do need to take a break when you need to take a break um having that refinement also for some of you that means changing up your location changing up your scenery excuse me changing up your um the resources that you use is there an untapped resource for those of you that are creating art and this could be any form of artwork or um you know it could be poetry it could be writing it could be you know like i said painting dra uh, drawings um anything that's artistic creating music you need to tap into a different energy source because the one you've been tapping onto needs some rest it needs to take a break you know like you're chasing it down you're staying up late at night and this is where we kind of see this energy in reverse like because it feels like some of you are like i'm staying up all night but i've got nothing to show for it and it's like well because you're tired you need to take a break you need to take a nap you know keep that in mind so your plans need some refinement into that okay and let's find out what you need to surrender surrendering is really great so that you can bring um can bring more energy in by letting go 
Surrender your attachment to results. The formula for success is to do all you can to to make things happen, then let go of the results. Holding on too tightly to a desired outcome can sabotage it. This is what we're also seeing here as well, very much like that rest card. It's very, very, very tuned to this rest card. And also we're talking about with the Empress card, about kind of like you've created all that you can, you've done all you can, you've learned everything that you can learn at this point. You know, you can do some refinements to your plan and then after that you need you need to live it leave it alone. Let it have a break. Let it have space between you and the project you and the person you know like you've done all you can you can't let it drain you anymore there has to be like i said since we're having the four of cups that's not here right now this brings into mind with the four of cups it's like there's a new opportunity and you need to decide if you want to take it or you want to switch out a third cup and keep it to threes some projects that for you three to four is enough for you like do not add more to your plate do not try to chase into more if there's skills you're trying to learn max out at three skills at this current time and place like this is a great starting place for you to get your basics your foundation done and then you'll be have be you'll have building blocks for later you know and um also again this is also a, a thing surrender to spirit which is also could mean like i said for some of you who work with deities who work with goddesses who work you know this could be a sign for that as well like you know you're giving up to your goddess you ask for their help and you you know leave your offerings um for some of you this could be ancestors you know if you don't work like i said don't work with spirits or anything um this could also just be to the universe you leave it up to universe leave it up to the divine you've done all you can you know celebrate how far you've come take a break and you can also celebrate by taking a break all right stress relief and self-care from caring comes courage to be loving kind and compassionate is the objective one close your eyes and take a deep breath slowly exhale Two, repeat to yourself may i be kind may i be happy may i be safe repeat for others may they be kind may they be happy may they be safe and finally may everyone be kind may everyone be safe may everyone be safe oh, may everyone be happy may everyone be safe excuse me so we have that here. This could be a sign for some of you. Um, also, speaking to your goddess, your deity, to your ancestors, leaving affirmations or make you know saying like you know things along the lines of like thank you for showing gratitude, thank for thankful to the universe, thankful for spirit, um, hoping that love and kindness spread as much as possible. Surrounding yourself with love, affirmations. Like I said, treating yourself like a goddess, treating yourself like a, a divinely spiritual creature in that way as well. Um, divine energy. Um, by giving you those kind words as well. Like those words need some refinement in that way. Um, okay, and let me oh, right over here. We're gonna end with this. If you're wondering, like I know I'm I know I normally like to use my self-care cards. They look like this one. Um, occasionally I will pull at least once to twice a week minimally I try to do on my Instagram account if you go to my stories um, there'll be like a little box in there I'll be like yeah I know if you want me to pull a card for you for free you know drop an email in this little box and then I will reply in my stories with a picture of the card you know sometimes I do that occasionally um, also in my discord i do that as well so you know check out my other socials everything's like magic bun bun under or magic underscore bun bun um everything's always linked on all my profiles through my link tree you know check me out on other socials if you would like more content more tarot content i try to keep everything here on youtube as much as i can but there's some content that is just better like if i write it out or um you'll see it first like on instagram so yeah all right, pile number three, let's see what the universe has to say to you for this new moon in Taurus energy, which you might want to be doing, saying to yourself, obviously this is a lot right here that you can just work with, so you, cho you can choose to use this one or not. Totally and completely up to you to use any of them. Dream big, dream with your heart have good dreams you might have a lot of um dreams at night so maybe take note if you're able to hopefully you see this in time you know think um have a journal next to you write down your dreams your um deities their universe or spirit 
might be sending you signs signs and you know in threes and fours <laughs> terms of like numbers but dream big and dream with your heart and then we kind of bring it like back to full circle with the the love of venus here and like being kind and showing love and compassion even just towards yourself like those are small steps that can lead to something very very great all right pile number three thank you again for being here i truly do appreciate it please drop a comment like the video subscribe to the channel share with a friend if you can you know all these great ways are um are great ways to support the channel completely completely for free and I truly do appreciate it. It really helps me out. Um, again, please check out me on my other socials and you know, like I said, you can find me almost everywhere. Thank you again and I hope you have a wonderful new moon in Taurus. I hope the energy um, treats you right. You're not super, you know, you don't close yourself off there. Remember, dream with big, dream with your hearts and other than that, pile number three, I will catch you in the next one. Bye!